Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the second in our series of regular uh, webinars. We plan on doing these every five to six weeks, and many of you were here last time for our inaugural session with City of Sydney. And uh, you all want to let's mute yourselves. That would be helpful, uh, and, unless you've got a question. So we're going to mute everybody and. John uh, uh, Newton, I met, uh, what, three years ago, I think, something like that. John, you were in a, a class I did in Rochester, and uh, I've stayed in touch with John. I, I value his uh, expertise when it comes to lighting. I thought he would be a great resource to meet with you all today and present some, uh, some strategies and techniques and insights, a little bit different than just a product person. Uh, he's got some real insights that I think you'll find valuable. And John has consented to do a interactive meeting. So if you have questions, you don't have to hold them. You don't have to put them in the chat box. You can just fire away uh, as long as we uh, mind our manners and, and don't everybody talk at one time. But if you've got a question, uh, feel free to uh, pose it to John. And, he, and we will uh, go ahead and get started. John, I'm going to turn it over to you. I'm going to mute myself and uh, take it away. Good morning, everybody, and, and please, I, I would really like it to be interactive. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm much better with questions than I end up just speaking. So uh, please uh, stop me and raise your hand and, and ask a question, and I, I very much appreciate it, and hopefully I can answer it. If not, I'll get back to you. So as Steve mentioned, I'm a, I'm a lighting guy, and, and I very, very, very much want to change the numbers nationally with the amount of falls that happen. And uh, that was my promise, and that's my mission. And there's some other things that we do that pay the bills, and, and we're working towards this end of it, but it's uh, pretty important. And I do believe there's a, an element missing in all the things that are, are talked about with fall prevention and, and lighting. It's just left up as a very general term called lighting. And what we'll talk about is certainly some, some products, but it's more the technique of lighting that, that has a, a, a big effect on our balance. So again, that's gonna be the theme throughout is gonna be lighting. I will talk about some uh, the numbers and we'll talk about uh, what can be done to, to make that happen. And please interrupt me at any time. Steve, we can, are people still coming on or? Change the slide. Uh, please. Is, is, I think everybody's muted. Yeah, I'll unmute everybody. I'll open them all up and you, uh, you all can open your mics and if you like, so you can have a conversation with John. And let's go ahead and uh, there we go. So I, uh, I, I stole a little line from, from Clint Eastwood and good time, you right? He's got a new movie out there. About the, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And, and the bad is the statistics. And, and I'm not sure if everybody's aware of these statistics. Um, CDC does a, a good job of providing them, and, and they're bad. They're, they're really, really bad. The, the amount of hospitalization, the amount of death. And then what's not sometimes as a statistic is, is how it just simply changes our life. You know, if there's a fear of falling. Uh, do we not move as much? Are we not as active? And then that leads to, to other issues of, of uh, not being mobile, which can cause a lot of things from diabetes on. So it's a, it's a big deal. Statistics capture the numbers, the money. They don't capture the fear. And um, that, that should be a noise well. Um, the cost, it's extremely bad. I mean, there's a the numbers we'll, we'll talk about right now that it costs Medicare or Medicaid or, or out of pocket is, is astronomical. And, um, and then we'll talk about the good news is that it's preventable. You don't have to fall because you age. Um, it's just bad when you do. So um, it's preventable and these numbers can be changed. And aging in place, and I'm sure we have a mixed audience of some people at senior living facilities, some people that care for people in their home, and aging in place is a choice, right? Whether that person wants to stay home or whether they want to go to a facility, 
until it's not their choice. Um, it could be a financial decision um, or not, but it's, a, it's certainly a, a health issue. You know, falling and, and breaking a hip can certainly lead to not being able to stay in your home. Um, falling and getting TBI can certainly change your position at a, at a facility as well too. So the, the costs range more than just what Medicare and Medicaid pays from whether it's the person, whether it's their family and whether it's the facility that cares for them. So there, there's a, um, everybody is interested for sure in, in fall prevention and, and, and helping people not fall so they can age in place. Um, okay, Steve. So these are statistics taken from the CDC. So every second of every day, and, and if you haven't seen these or, or don't know them, I'm, I'm sure a lot of people have meetings and talk about these quite a bit, um, but it's pretty common just about the CDC and, and falls prevention or, or falls statistics, and, and these will come up. But it's staggering. These are also a couple years old, and they're predicting for the future. Uh, the future is here now, and they haven't updated these numbers, but as everybody knows, uh, the aging population is, is, is hitting us pretty hard. And um, these numbers are, are sure to go up. And I believe they're, they're underestimated. One in, five, one in five falls cause serious injuries such as broken bones or head injuries. And, and that would be maybe a hit. That would be a serious uh, and TBI. But also those falls, it's important to keep in mind even if they don't cause a problem like a broken bone or TBI, they instill some fear for the next fall. And instilling fear for the next fall might stop that mobility. And once we're not mobile, other, other problems seem to set in and, and cause a lot of problems for us. So very important to stay mobile, very important to, to not be afraid of falling. Um, and certainly very important not to fall and get hurt. Any, any questions at all on these statistics or certainly have, hopefully people have seen these before? All right, here comes the money part. Um, Port Fallen equals about 36 million falls per year. So if we look down at the two graphs, they're projecting by 2030. I still don't know if that's correct, but um, I think it's going to be a little bit more. But certainly in 2018, that was real numbers. And um, that's, that's a big deal. 52 million people going to 73 million people. And that's happening fast every day. So and the biggest thing, which I, I think I touched on a little bit at the beginning, was the problems these cause, whether you can't stay in your home, whether you need someone to come into your home, whether the children can't deal with the home, or whether the home has to be sold. And then once you're in a facility, and, and that's your choice, hopefully it's your choice, that might not be a, um, a senior choice, it may be a, a care choice. And that So falls need to be prevented for everybody's sake, and, and certainly the, the people aging. Okay. Change it. Oh, please do. So more on the costs. In 2015, six years ago, just in Medicare alone was 31 billion. That's just in hospital visits. That's just maybe in, in, in some home, people coming into your home and, and, and helping you there if Medicare covers that. Um, so the average cost for a fall injury is over $30,000. And that's just the initial cost. That's not what's going to happen after that fall. If, if there has to be some changes to your living um, or, or who cares for you. We all pay for this um, in one way or another for sure, whether it's through taxes or, or whether it's out of pocket or whether it's 
that person losing their funds. And so we all pay for this and, and have a, a, a direct effect on us. I am also looking at maybe working with Medicare and some of the insurance companies that pay for this. There are some programs coming out now. Um, I can't speak about them yet because I'm just learning, but there's some, some options to get modifications done to your home so that you can, um, so you can make some changes. And that could include lighting, which we'll talk about in a second. For sure, there's there's changes with with um, ramps and grab bars and, and and that kind of thing, and maybe moving down to one floor. But lighting is sometimes left out a little bit, and we're going to talk really about that in a second. As soon as we get better, this very very bad stuff, right? The the cost and, and the numbers that it's affecting us. The last line here is direct cost do not account for long-term effects of these injuries, such as disability, dependence on others, lost time from work and household duties and reduced quality of life. I guess I don't know how to put a value on, on reduced quality of life. You know, if you're living in fear of falling, if you're not moving around, if you're, if you're not being active and your quality of life has gone down, you know, that's a, that's a value we probably can't put on. Okay, Steve. Fall prevention. So if you look at the National Council on Aging, study, uh, the CDC, whoever works with these, they'll put up basically the same bullet points. And I think they're wonderful. I think they're very, very good. I think it's good that you talk to your doctor. Although a lot of people won't tell them that they got an issue or what's going on with tripping or falling because they're afraid they might have to leave or, or they're giving out too much information. So I, I think it's good to talk to your doctor. I don't know that everybody does. Um, I think it's good to talk to your family, but I don't believe everybody does. Um, certainly nobody wants to give up their car keys, you know, so they don't tell their, their family some things, but it's important for sure. Exercise, you know, it's, um, extremely important. I think at, a, at an older age, it's being mobile. I, I think it's doing light exercises. I think it's walking. I think it's doing a lot of things right, right from a chair um, for, for balance. And it's extremely important. Um, I, I tend to get there sometimes myself and sometimes I don't. So, but exercise and mobility is extremely important. Have your eyes checked. Uh, obviously your eyes change as we get older. Um, for sure, and, and we may need glasses or, or that kind of thing, but it, it's extremely important. And this one is important because you, you need to see. The brain, the brain works with um, the eyes and it can make some moves and it can have good balance. So having your eyes checked is extremely important. Um, and this is where lighting is gonna come in as well too. We'll talk about it in a second. Make your home safer. I think this is, um, sort of like you're supposed to wash your hands, you know, get rid of things you can trip over for sure. Grab bars, grab bars, I, I think they should be mandatory. I, I think it really should be code that grab bars are, are built in, in your bathroom area. There's so many places you can trip and fall and, and everything is hard. So, and they're very decorative nowadays too. So it's not like it's institutional. Some of these bars are very, very decorative, even if they're just for holding a towel, but to hold on to, they're, they're important. Railings on both sides of the stairs is a, is a good idea. I, I think sometimes we have stuff in our hands, so you got to use at least one side. And then here's the one that, that gets me bothered a little bit. Make sure your home has lots of lights by adding more and brighter light bulbs. And that's it. And this is all that's going to be said on lighting from recommendations for these. So there's other things that are very important. But when you talk about lighting, what does that mean to anybody? So I get rid of a 60 watt light bulb and I put a 75 watt light bulb there. Do I add a couple of light bulbs to the room? What does it really mean? And, and I don't know that anybody really knows. So we'll talk about lighting and lighting is balance. When you talk about moving a throw rug or something you can trip over, it's a good idea and it makes perfect sense. However, most broken hips and TBI come from from falling sideways. Falling sideways happens from a lack of balance. And this is a big word, balance. So have your eyes checked, have the proper lighting and have good balance. You know, the eye sees, the brain 
through the eye sees thousands of vertical and horizontal lines. And it's able to take that in consideration, compute it, and next thing you know, you have good balance. So, so it's extremely important that the lighting is correct. So how the eye works, when you look at a, a bright light, your eyes instantly get bleached. When you turn from that bright light, they instantly don't adjust to the even illumination of the, of the <coughs> So, so that, that's an issue. Um, I don't care how bright that light bulb is, if it's the brightest light in the room, your eye's going to adjust to it instantly. And when you turn away, it doesn't adjust back. So now your eyes are, are your brain's working hard. You know, it's not in sync yet because the eyes are still adjusting. And, and that's really the issue of, of lighting. We're going to talk about even illumination, reflected illumination, and, and by all means, no glare. Glare, glare, glare should be illegal. Um, it's, it's very, very bad. So when they say add brighter light bulbs, I, I guess that's confusing to a lot of people. It, it is. I think you need to change the lighting a little bit, at least in certain rooms. You know, if you got a reading station, sure, make a brighter light bulb there. It's important. Um, we'll also talk a little bit here about incandescence to LEDs. LEDs is a, are, are wonderful. To put out 800 lumens, which a 60 watt light bulb did when we were growing up, is nine watts or eight watts compared to 60 watts. So we've already taken and, and made the energy level extreme. And lighting is a tool. It really should be used. Yep, I like to save energy. I, I think it's wonderful. And it's the right thing to do. And LEDs are doing that for us. There's no question about it. But we still put lights on to see. So that light is a tool and it has to be done right. Unfortunately, a lot of, of the older population are, are, you can't leave a light bulb out in the house. You know, it's just got to turn it off. I, I visited so many places where they had lights, they just didn't turn them on because they didn't want to use the energy. You know, and I, I think that's good, but you know, it was two o'clock in the afternoon and the house looked like a, a dungeon. And, and that's no way to, to live and, it, and it's not safe. So people have to know that um, it's good to turn off an LED light bulb too, but you can put it on if you need it. It's not drawing a lot of power, for sure, for sure. Has anybody seen any of these, these fault preventions from the CDC or study? See, we can go to the next. Oh, we got a. I have it. Anyone so, have questions for John as we're going along here? Yep, I had a couple that said they haven't seen these, and, and I and I think it's important to see these. I, I don't know, you know, the the crew we have today. If your job is to help people stay in their home, or if your job is at a, a senior facility or or a care facility, but I would think that. These are part of the part of the plan every day for your clients. You know, if your if your job is to keep people in their home longer, um, keeping them from falling is, is going to keep them in their home longer. Um, that keeps a client in their home longer as well. And the same thing with a senior facility. I, I think there's a different wrap right now after the pandemic, but but for sure you, you want a person to to stay where they want to age uh, for sure. And, and fall prevention probably has to be something talked about daily, if not weekly. All right, great. So we got a, I just had a, a question pop up. It must've been in a chat, but it went away. Um, so I got one. So the information is general and does not address lighting specifics or glare. Excellent. So I guess I, I talked a little bit about the problems out there that are advertised um, or put out there from certainly people more influential than me, like the CDC. And I wanted these numbers to get out there because I do think they're ugly. And it's very general on what to do. And this is a lighting class. So we're gonna, we're gonna move into the lighting now. Um, and that's why I needed your questions. You can go to the next, next one, Steve.
So the good news, and then we'll leave these uh, statistics. Falls and fear of falling are preventable and do not have to be an inevitable part of aging. Just because we age does not mean we have to fall. It's just, it plays a bigger, bigger role. So when you fall and bones are a little softer, or reflexes are a little, a little slower, bigger things happen. And going to the bathroom at night happens more often as we age. So there's more opportunity for a fall onto a hard surface. Um, but we're gonna talk now about some proper lighting technique, which is a combination of intensity, color temperature, which is the Kelvin temperature, whether it's very warm or very cool, even illumination and glare illumination. So intensity, you need enough intensity for the application. If you're reading, if you're writing, if you're working on small, small things or a puzzle, you need lots of light and it needs to be even illumination. So even illumination will allow your eye to, to adjust and it won't constantly adjust. It'll be dialed in. So when it has a bright spot, when you turn to your left or right, and then a darker spot, when you turn the opposite direction, your eye is not in tune. It's not dialed in. It's constantly trying to adjust. This does a few things. It allows you not to see as well. It ruins the moment because your brain's working a little too hard on, on adjusting to the light with the eyes that it's not possibly enjoying to the fullest intensity the, the puzzle or, or the article that you're reading or the task that you're taking place. And I don't care if that's a, something that needs a lot of light or if it's having a glass of wine and talking under some ambiance, right? Your eye wants to adjust. And at that point, every single thing you're doing is going to become more pleasurable and safer. Glare. LEDs are, are probably the worst light source in the world for glare. They give off a ton of glare and they're a very, very small light source. So that's the only thing bad about them, but this is usually fixed with a frosted lens. So every, every light you get, no matter the size or shape, should have a frosted lens or not see the source. That's just how it should be bought. Now, if it's not bought that way, it can be hidden. It can be behind a, a cove, as long as it's shining onto a, a, a non-shiny surface that would reflect it back out to you. But always, always want to have a, um, a frosted lens, and then that'll eliminate glare. You know, we like our, our countertops to be a granite, and we like to polish them so much that they're, they're actually a mirror. And, and this becomes a problem. One kind of, I'm gonna stop real quick. What kind of lens? A frosted lens. So that fixture will have an opaque or a frosted lens to it. Whether it's a linear fixture or a decorative fixture, you'd want that to have um, a shade um, or an opaque lens so that I can't see the actual light source. That'll eliminate glare. You can use it without those. Well, plastic, plastic works. That was a question that just popped up. So plastic works. It's um, plastic or glass, as long as they're opaque. Um, our, our fixtures are linear, and we just use a linear linear lens over the top of the LEDs. Uh, lots for under cabinet lighting and that kind of thing. So the countertop, which is, is like a mirror, will reflect that glare if it's not done that way. With um, a frosted lens, plastic, you're going to have a, a simple line of, of light. You're still going to have reflection. If, if you have a, a countertop like that, but it's not going to have glare. Glare is what's offensive. It, it's not the light. A lot of people think it's the light, but it, it is the light source, but it's really the glare that's offensive, not so much the, the actual light itself. Color temperature. So this is when they talk about warm white, cool white, um, neutral light. I think they're buzzwords, but when you talk about warm light, you're looking at a 27K, probably what we grew up with with a light bulb and it's at an incandescent light bulb at its full intensity. When it, when it was dimmed down, it would turn more ambery uh, and that could go down to 2000K, almost like a lot of, um, almost like a lot of, uh, um, I'm sorry, the incandescent bulb 
you'll you'll see the the fixture on the inside the light source. I think this is good for evening. The I don't know if anybody else has heard too about circadian lighting, um, human centric lighting, where we're trying to match, where we're trying to match the the daylight, where it starts off very 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 white and continues to get very very warm until the sun sets in the evening. I think it's wonderful. I think it's great. We certainly need some natural illumination and we need it throughout the day, whether that's outside ideally or whether that's very, very close to a window. We certainly need to wake up in the morning. We need to set our circadian rhythm and, and we certainly need to, to calm down in the evening and, and go down like that. So without getting into expensive systems that allow that to happen, you can get tunable lighting and you can adjust it throughout the day. We, we have some in our cold lighting in our living room that is very, very in the winter time. I put it on very, very white in the morning and I can make, it makes a difference. We can feel it. And then throughout the day, it's not on usually. And then in the evening, we turn it to a very warm for some ambiance lighting. And, and that works out nice. Um, but ideally your residence would be a 3000 K color temperature. That's very, very neutral. It works good for your earth tones. It works good for your for your bowls, and it does a good job of keeping things neutral. Um, very, very good. Getting a hit with some blue rich light in the morning, whether it's through through natural light or through another light source. Um, lots of times you'll have a mirror, and they'll have some LED lights going around it that are that are um, without glare and they're very, 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 very white. Um, a good dose of that in the morning is pretty good for you as well, too. Blue needs to be eliminated at night, though. No, no blue after dinner time. It's just not good. It, um, it keeps you awake. It suppresses melatonin, and, it, and it's not good. And you've probably seen a lot of devices nowadays are coming out with, with products that will eliminate the blue at night or have night lighting, if you will. And that would go into um, even illumination I talked a little bit about. The eye likes it. So the more you can have um, under cabinet lighting that is not a puck light, but a, but a full light all the way around, your eyes adjust better. Cold lighting, reflecting off the ceiling is a great technique for lighting. Really, really good. It reflects off the ceiling and it lights up the room as if the moon or sun was lighting up that room. I think there was a couple of questions. Let me just see. Uh, information I don't know what kind of lens to surprise me. I see that lights and bulbs for open fixtures, which may work well if I have dimmer. So, there's a question here about um, I see a lot of Edison style bulbs for open fixtures, which may work well if I have dimmer. They're they're nice, they're they're very nice light. They, they're um, they're Edison style bulbs, so they, they have a screw in bulb, they also have a, a their LED. But they have a filament inside them. They're, they're not overly glare. They could give off some glare for sure, but not overly. It's really a nice light. And being on a dimmer, unless the LED is dim to warm, the LED light on a dimmer will not change its Kelvin temperature when it dims. If it's 3000K, it'll just give off less light, but it'll still be 3000K. So take that into consideration if you're looking for a white light that when you dim it, you would have more of an ambiance light that um, that won't take place unless it's a dim to warm. So lighting that reflects off the ceiling would be a linear lighting. So you would put up a piece of cold molding, usually two or three, four inches from the top of the ceiling, and then you would put in a linear LED light in the cove so you can hide that light and the light is usually a, a half an inch by a half an inch so that cove can really be the size um, that looks good for that room in the daylight and what happens is that goes from side to side on the ceiling and then that reflects off the ceiling i've seen some applications though where they put that light shining straight up and what happens there is it just gives a a hot spot of light and it doesn't graze the ceiling you really want that light to, to graze the ceiling much more pleasing so the eye doesn't see light dark. It just sees a fade away and it can, re, it can really adjust to that and feel more comfortable. Um, normally that's done with a fixture that's on a 45 degree angle and it just sits in behind the cold. 
You don't want to see the light. You want that to sit behind the cove, but just under the cove. Sometimes if coves are, are deeper or bigger, they normally just black that up with a piece of wood so they can lift that fixture up. Um, it's, a, it's a really, really good way to light a room. And then I would supplement that with a reading light if there was a spot for reading, that's for sure. Okay. Steve, uh, we can go to the next one, I think. So here's a stair light, and lots of times what they'll tell you is to make sure you have a light at the top of the stairs and the bottom of the stairs and a light switch at, at both ends. And, and the light switch makes good sense. I, I like it. But when you put a light at the top, and again, if you take their advice and put a brighter light and a light at the bottom and put a brighter light, you make the landing and, and the, the, the top and the bottom very bright areas, but the middle can become even darker. Because you adjust it to a bright light, now you're in an area where there's no light. So in the after photo, what we did was we put a light strip, simple light strip, underneath the handrail, and it lights up the stairs evenly. When you drive or when you walk, you normally don't look at your bumper when you're driving or your feet as you walk. What you're doing is you're looking straight ahead, but your brain has already done a good job. It's already taken in all it needs to take in to navigate. Um, sometimes when you look down at your feet is when you actually trip or fall, right? Um, the old trick we used to do is to, to walk with a glass of tea that was pretty full. And if you stare at it, it, it starts to shake a little bit. If you don't stare at it, it, it doesn't spill. And that works, you can, you can try that experiment. And, it, and it's the same thing, it's how we walk and drive. So by seeing everything right off the bat and we're using our peripheral vision, we have more balance. We're, we're not confused. We're, we're, we're walking good. We know what to do next. So again, this is even illumination. It's reflected illumination. It's off the wall and it's off the steps and you don't see the light source at all. And it's a pretty inexpensive way to do it. This would have been a 3000K would have been fine. We don't need to go warm. We don't need to go cooler, just 3000K. And then however your stairs and wall look, will we'll look the same and look good, reflected with that illumination. So this is a great technique for sure, if you've got to use stairs in the first place. Any questions on this one? All right, Steve. Bathroom night lights, my favorite favorite, most important light in the whole world is to put a light under the vanity. So many times people say use night lights in the bathroom and then they leave it at that. So what we do is we take that, that night light that's pretty common on the bottom left and we plug it in. And I don't know if it's 2000K, 5000K or 6000K. And many times the ones I've seen are extremely white, uh, which at two, three o'clock in the morning, or in the evening after dinner, even as well, that's too blue. That's too much blue light. That will suppress melatonin. That will wake you up and have an effect on your, in your body and your sleep. So what happens is when that light is like that, it's extremely bright. Your eye sees it because everything else is completely dark. Your eyes are probably adjusted at night as well, too. You're just waking up to go to the bathroom. And then you see that light and, and you'll automatically change your body. You will wake up, you will, you will squint your eyes, you know, it'll be offensive and you won't like it and you'll see to go to the bathroom. But as soon as you leave that light, even in the same bathroom, it's dark. So when you turn away from it, now your eyes are bleached and you just can't see. So what we do is we take a, a light and sorry about the photo, I think we use this one from Lime but we'll take a light under a normal toe kick or, or a raised vanity like this, and we put the light underneath. Now, normally that light will be on a toe kick that's, that's on, a, on a ground vanity, and that light will be at the top of the toe kick, shining out onto the floor. It's extremely low level. You can see this light, your eyes are adjusted, and it's a 22K Kelvin. 22K is like a candle. So, 
a fireplace. You know, a fire is very soothing, very, very warm, and, and very absent of any kind of blue, blue light, blue nanometer. So 22K is common. It works well. And you want to make that an even illumination. And that light will fade across the floor and grays. It's pleasing. When you get out of bed and you walk to the bathroom, you, you won't squint your eyes. You, you won't wake up totally. You'll be able to see. And then hopefully you'll be able to get back to the bed, bed safely and fall asleep. It's so inexpensive. It burns hardly any energy. We use a very, very low, low LED light. And we put that on a dial dimmer, which uses even less electricity. And then many times we don't even turn it off. Um, there's normally a switch there or a remote, but to leave it on, you're, you're talking pennies a year and, and its life is, is 20 years. So sometimes it, it doesn't pay to turn them off in case someone forgets to turn it on or doesn't use it. So, so we leave them on in some cases. Um, remember, it's a tool. We do want to save energy. This uses extremely little energy, and, and the tool is to, to stop a, a fall um, and to get a good night's sleep. This is, um, this is the way to light a bathroom for nighttime and fall prevention, for sure. Okay, Steve. Same thing with the bed. Um, it's hard to take a picture of light at night, so this appears to be too bright, but it would be very, very, very dim. With your eyes closed, this light would be dim enough to not affect you, to not see it. But with your eyes open, you'll have a little bit of light, almost like moonlight uh, in your room and be able to go. So, so it does allow you to fall asleep. It does allow you to see the floor. It does allow you to light up the room a little bit, just enough once your eyes are open and once your eyes are adjusted um, without seeing another light source to, to safely navigate the room. And this would be the same whether you're home or, or in a senior facility. Again, it's 2200K. That's, that's the, the Kelvin temperature to use. There's no blue in it whatsoever. And it's very warm and soothing, like a campfire or a candle. Okay. So it's balance. You, you don't fall normally because you tripped over a rug or you tripped over a toy. Um, obviously you can, but, but it's not where you're going to break your hip in most cases or get TBI. So balance is, is the key and you get good balance from good sight. You check those eyes and, and you have proper lighting. We can't see without light. You can change everything with light. You can change the color of your walls. You, you can change how you see. It's the missing piece that doesn't get talked about a lot, but it's extremely important. You can do a, a, a test by just changing that night light out or adding a light to the room. And, and you'll see a difference in, in uh, falls. We, we added a light to underneath the bed and the bathroom in a, in a, in a care facility for a lady who had dementia and, and wandered. And she was, she was a chronic faller. She would fall three times a week. After installing that light, she didn't fall for six months. So that's a big difference. She was uh, able to sleep. Um, she was able to sleep really good. She was able to go to the bathroom. And she was able to do it with no fear. And, and that's, that's, that's worth quite a bit of money. All of these things I'm, I'm talking about lighting-wise are pretty inexpensive as well. Very, very inexpensive. You know, sometimes you might have to run a wire where a wire can't be run, and that may change things a little bit. But in most cases, adding this light is extremely simple. Any questions? You know, I did show some, I showed about the kitchen, or I'm sorry, I showed the bathroom and the stairs. Um, living room we talked about with some cold lighting, uh, extremely important for general illumination. The entryway to your home as well too. In, in many cases, we put a light right near the door that, that's pretty bright. You know, it might be a, a fancy looking light fixture and, and it might light up the whole porch and all that area. 
But as you walk into that area, you, you walk into a very bright light. And, and sometimes that doesn't help, even for safety. When your eyes are, are bleached out, you can certainly see under that light. But as soon as there's no light, and there is a line and where there's light and darkness, it's extremely dark. So you can't see within that dark area. Um, you want more even illumination. Under a full moon, after 20 minutes, your eye can see as far as it'll let you. There's no dark spots. So pretty important to have that even illumination. I, I look at putting um, a cove. If you've got an overhang in front of the door, it's nice to put a, a cove there, shine it up to the overhang and let the light fall down for some even illumination. Um, it's better to have a less bright light if you've got to have just one light at the door than to have a really bright one that's going to bleach you out. You'll still be able to see. Um, living room is cold. Kitchen under cabinet lighting. So kitchen is extremely important for under cabinet lighting. Light doesn't bend. So, you, so your cabinets are, are, are your backsplash, I'm sorry, is, is usually dark, even during the day and even with all your lights on in the room, it just doesn't bend underneath. Well, when it comes to a kitchen countertop, the CDC or the IES says that that should be the brightest spot in the house. We cook there, we clean there, we chop there, we read there, and then we clean there. So if you don't have enough light, you can't do those things. So under cabinet lighting, even illumination to the front of the cabinet is very important. You never want to put the light in the back uh, of the cabinet shining down because you'll see that source of light. When it's in the front and behind the lip, you don't see the source of light. Your backsplash becomes the light. Your countertop becomes the light. Um, not only is it pleasing, it's very, very useful. It's, it's a workhorse for sure. On uh, the bathroom, we talk about the night light. Um, very, very important, my favorite light. Also important to have good hygiene light. Light is, um, our faces are not flat. So when you wanna have some hygiene light around the mirror, you should have it from the top. You should also have it from the bottom so there's no shadows. Um, it's much easier to, to um, conduct hygiene. Stairs, extremely important. You can't fall on the stairs. It's just not gonna be one landing to fall. It's gonna be a few steps. So um, very important to have good lighting there. Any other questions? Let's see, we see a lot about fall prevention ready to grab bars and trip hazards, but the airport in terms of lighting temperature during the winter, sometimes I hate on bikes and travels will cause high impact fall prevention ready. So that was a comment. Thank you. Yeah, I think it's missing. I, I think um, I think the CDC does a good job of putting out some numbers, the National Council on Aging, AARP. They all put out good stuff on numbers. They all put out the, the steady program is widely used by, by everyone. And I think it's important. I, I just think that it um, doesn't always get used. We don't always exercise, right? We don't always tell our kids what's going on with us or our doctors sometimes. Um, you know, we don't always do that out of, out of probably some fear but, um, or, or pride. But with lighting, we just take it for granted. You can't see without light. You need light to see. And it also affects us, some say as important as, as water and air. Certainly not as quick. If you're without water or air, you know, things are going to get bad real fast. But lighting has that effect over time. And the problem with over time is that we take it for granted. So we live with less light in our room because we might not want to have a light on for electricity. We don't want to understand the LED saves a lot of energy. Um, we might do it because we just got used to it. We, we know our surroundings. You know, if I close my eyes, I, I know every picture that's on my wall. But so I get used to it and I, and I make exceptions for it instead of having good lighting and being able to see. You know, sometimes when we do under cabinet lighting for the first time and somebody never had it before, it's like they just saw something for the very first time in their life and they can never, never go without it. Um, so, so lighting is just take it for granted. Uh, unfortunately, lighting is last in most projects, whether you're building a home, whether you're doing an addition, whether it's a setting up for aging in place, lighting is last. And unfortunately, most, most projects are, are over time and over budget. And what's last is lighting, what gets cut, 
Some people would say, just put a light there, it's okay. Just do this, it's okay. Um, some lighting fixtures obviously are, are extremely expensive. But John, there's a couple other questions in the box there. Okay. What are your thoughts on antibacterial lighting? Can you share some of your favorite? Oh, let me go to the first one here. So big deal with antibacterial lighting. Uh, it's coming on super strong. There's always been a little bit of, of UV light. Um, I don't get involved with it just yet. There's some major companies out there doing it. And I try to stay up on it, if you will. Um, very, it works. Um, lots of times what they'll do too, prior to the pandemic, was hospitals, even hotels, would have a light in the drain so that that light would, would be, a, it'd be a UV light and that would kill any bacteria that was, was going down the drain so it wouldn't affect that as well too, it works through water. Um, now it's, it's certainly a bigger deal. Um, the pandemic has brought it to, uh, to the forefront for sure. And I believe it's good. I believe it's working. Your hospitals are getting into it. Um, it's not the only answer to, to get rid of bacteria, but it, but it certainly does work. And I think we got some good products out there. I don't know that I trust what everybody says just yet about it. Um, I think um, it's the wild west and some people can grab some, some marketing ideas and certainly uh, with the pandemic and, and jump on it and use it for marketing. But there are some very, very good companies out there. Acuity Brands would be somebody you can, can trust for sure um, and what they had to say. The IES, Illuminating Engineering Society, um, is certainly, they are the authority on lighting. Um, they're biased, they're not a company. They um, just promote good lighting and certainly one you can follow. You don't have to be a member to get on their website and, and, and learn for sure. A couple um, questions, John, about product, where to find product, you know, where to get it. Uh, any thoughts on that? Yeah, one more, I'm gonna finish up with that, uh, the UV. Good information too is the Lighting Research Center, which was at Rensselaer, but they have since moved to Mount Sinai. On the East Coast, the Lighting Research Center is, is your go-to, whether it's for UV, whether it's for horticulture, whether it's for, for road lighting or residential lighting, um, aging in place, they are my go-to for sure. I, um, I follow Dr. Mariana Figueroa and Dr. Mark Ray. Um, they're, they're extremely knowledgeable and give us some good information for sure. Um, Steve, the next question was, what can we do for good lighting and control plans for our projects? You would want to go to a lighting designer. You would want to go to your, your a lighting showroom, and, and they can help you put that in there. The LRC out of Mount Sinai now, though, does have some residential lighting how-to. Universal design is another one that, that gives a lot with lighting, and, and controls are involved there, too. Certainly some light switches are easy to use and some are not. Um, some stuff is remote now, some stuff is with Alexa. So there's all kinds of ways to control it. I tend to keep it pretty simple because it's cost effective that way. Sometimes it can get out of control, but you certainly want to keep it, keep it cost effective so people can, the masses can use it. And, and then you can start to change the numbers for sure with the falls. Um, but I would, I would work with a lighting designer. I would work with a universal design and I would work with um, your lighting showroom. Um, your kitchen, if you were doing a kitchen, they, they should have lighting people in there as well too when they design the kitchen. Very important that they talk about the lighting because that's gonna change the whole design as well too. So they should be knowledgeable on it. In the Northeast, there's a lack of lighting showrooms. Often order online and they have specific products you recommend. So, it's not specific products. You, you know, um, uh, if I was really biased, I would say mine, but um, it's, it's really not. I don't have any, any, any smoking gun product out there. I, I think it's lighting. So that product should not have any glare. That just is, is number one. Um, number two, you're setting up lighting to be linear, to be even illumination. So that lighting should be longer or you should be able to put it together. There should be no breaks in it. You should build lighting into, into the design with cold lighting so the lighting source is actually hidden um, to, to, to the handrail, to underneath the cabinets, to the toe kick, 
you want to make sure it's hidden. Now we still need some light fixtures that are, are good looking, um, that, that are nice, that are, are functional. I, I probably look at my, my talk is more on fall prevention, more on, on night lights and, and general illumination. But you know, I like a nice light fixture. I like a Tiffany, but that's okay. It's just the bulb that you're gonna put in it. So that should be frosted. That should be, if it's not frosted, done in a way there's no glare or, or it's not very intense. So, so that's what I would look at um, for, for online. And obviously everything is going online, online a little bit. Although here in Rochester, um, they've opened up a new store recently and, and I think it's coming back a little bit, um, but certainly online is where to go for sure. And a lot of the places I see, I can't tell it off the top of my head when, when I'm online, they'll have some lighting techniques or, or they'll have some resources tab and, and you might want to go in that tab and take a look at it. Um, Uh, good point. And in and outside of our home, we get used to things until something happens. We don't see them as a problem. Yeah, this is the part where the eye changes very, very slowly over time. You, you know, it's, um, they, they tease about your arm not being long enough because you you, you got to put it farther away just to read. Or I have to turn to my children and say, you know, what, is, what does this say? I can't see it. Um, I'm in denial. You know, I'm, I'm wearing some readers right now. And um, I, I need to probably wear those all the time, not for distance, but for, for up close for sure. Um, so I, I guess that's the transition period. And then eventually, you know, you, you need some more help with your eyes, whether it's whether it's having something done medically or having proper glasses and, and getting used to them for sure. Um, but lighting is the is the effect. You know, you, you do this probably multiple times a day when you walk into a bright area and it's extremely bright until you adjust. Or if you come out into a dark area, you, you can't see until you adjust. Now magnify that as we get older. A 75-year-old needs needs three times as much light as a 25-year-old to see the exact same thing equally with no other problems. Well, you need more light to see. And it's not just adding a brighter light bulb. It's it's practicing good lighting. Good lighting is the is the key. Once your eyes are adjusted, once your eyes are dialed in, you're at the top of your game. Your brain's at the top of its game. Whether it's enjoying uh, a glass of wine or a cup of coffee on the deck, or, or whether it's um, putting a puzzle together or, or making fly lures that take a lot of, lot of, lot of sight. But you just want to be dialed in. And, and lighting allows you to do that, or it doesn't. You know, if you do it wrong, it, it's, it's worse. I guess, than, than not doing anything for sure. And, and I think, you know, the, the numbers of falls are going up because there's more people aging. I get it, that makes perfect sense. But the problem is the, the, the percent of falls is going up. And really with everything that's going on with all the, 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 the agencies and everybody else talking about this and, and coming up with plans and study, you would think that the, the, the frequency would go down. And it's really just going up. We're, we're missing something. And um, again, bias as it is, and I can argue it, it it's lighting. And lighting's got to be done right and correct for sure. Um, I think we need to be cautious with UV light and for residential, maybe necessary. Yes, UV light is, um, you got to be cautious with it. And, and a lot of times I don't get involved with it because I, I think it can be dangerous. So there's a, a lot to, to learn about it and talk about it. It's not so much my, my expertise. Um, I do read on it a little bit, but I, I'm probably not going and getting involved uh, with it just yet. I want it to, uh, the dust to settle, if you will. But it, but it can be very dangerous. You know, you don't see UV, and when you're looking at it, it's, um, it can affect your eyes pretty bad. How do chandeliers affect light reflection? So the crystals or other decorative items reflect the light in a positive and negative way. Thoughts on pendant and over lighting versus linear lighting. So I, I love I love a chandelier. It's gorgeous, it's pretty, and it's got some some cut glass and some crystals on there. And um, I, I think it's uh, fantastic the way the sunlight can hit them or or light source can hit them. 
and, and cast that, that RGBW uh, onto our room and spread the light. I, I think it's wonderful. I love it. Um, I think it's good for us too. I, I really do. It's, um, it's, it's really nice. So how does it reflect? So if it's got a lot of glare and not all of them have a lot of glare, it, it could be just due to the light bulb itself. So that, that light bulb or that light source can be changed to one that doesn't offer that, that kind of glare. Um, you know, I certainly have a couple of crystals that I allow the, that I have the sun hit every day and I like to see them in the morning and it, it makes me happy. I, I like it. So I, I think it's a positive, very, very positive. Um, pendants over the kitchen island versus linear lighting. So linear lighting is tough to do over the, over the island. Um, I don't think it's pretty. Yeah, you can't hide it. And a couple of nice pendants are, are, are nice. They're decorative and they're, they're, they're a piece of art. And, and I think pendant lighting is, is a good way to go because it's decorative and, and not so blase, linear lighting, if you will. Um, just make it opaque, whether it's glass or whether it's plastic or whether it's wood, it'll be opaque. But, but if it's, you wanna have a, a design to it, you wanna have some art to it and some color and a little bit opaque, um, not so much that they're so dark, um, we do need to get some light and that light will shine down onto the, onto the island as well. But, but you just want to make sure that it's not getting off glare, whether that's the opacity of, of, the, of the pendant or that's the bulb you put inside, which can be easily changed. Um, linear lighting to me is, is under your cabinet behind the, behind the lip so you don't see it. Linear lighting to me is, is in your toe kick. Linear lighting to me is in your cold lighting reflected off of a wall. Um, that that's where linear lighting belongs over your workbench, you know, and certainly, um, you know, if you used to use a fluorescent bulb or an LED bulb, just make sure it's got no glare whatsoever. Melo, Steve, and uh, for this time, I will be doing vision on how to keep you for things. I was going to share my conference. I have to leave the office. Okay, so signing off. Okay. Okay. If there's um, anybody wants to reach out via via email or, or or ask me anything, that'll be fine. If you want to ask me about my thoughts on, on how to do something or somebody else's product, I, I like to talk about lighting, and um, certainly don't hesitate to to send me an email. Um, you can look up Newton Lighting Enterprises, and my contact information is there, um, or it's John at newtonlightingent.com. Certainly, Steve knows how to get, get a hold of me as well. Any other questions for John? Well, we've taken up our full time. I appreciate everyone's attendance and uh, taking uh, an hour out of your day to be here with us. And we'll look for you next time. And again, reach out to uh, any questions that you have. And John, a very informative presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. I appreciate it.